Our next recipient does something very, very extraordinary. Makes sick children feel like superheroes. In the 60s, a boy named Charles spent many an hour mesmerized by the amazing adventures of the caped crusader and his trusty sidekick, Boy Wonder. So when he grew up, he did the inevitable. He bought a Batmobile. And in addition to entertaining his two sons, he took it on the road, sharing the car with families who were most in need of a fun, lighthearted moment. Then. On a night in December of 2009, the Batmobile would take a ride that would forever change the trajectory of Charles's life. Charles met an extraordinary young man named Colton who would inspire him to build the Colton Cowell Memorial Crime Fighting Cave. We received a call that a young man uh, out in Chandler had received a terminal diagnosis for cancer and we were asked if we would bring the Batmobile out to kind of cheer things up. We had a little celebration with the child, Santa Claus was included, and then at the end I chased down his dad, Earl Cal, and I gave the keys to the Batmobile to him and insisted that he take his son for a ride in the car. When they left, most anybody would have defined Colton as a cancer patient. He was bald, he was in pain, he was clearly ill, but when he came back after going around the block with his dad, he was lit up like the Christmas tree that was inside their living room, and his father was emotional, and I learned a great lesson from that is that the car has the ability to create a memory for families. And meeting the Cowles and seeing Earl and seeing uh, their young son Colton is a moment that simply transformed my life. And I realized that when we came home from the hospital knowing that Colton wasn't gonna make it, all there was was sadness in our life. Charles came to our house that night with the Batmobile and Santa and there was no sadness that night. The other five kids weren't thinking about the fact that they were going to lose their brother in a matter of weeks. I got a phone call from Bridget with Hope Kids and she put me in contact with Charles and he said, Eric, I would love to meet with you and your husband so you can see what I'm doing now. He told me, he's like, I'm going to build a crime fighting cave and I went, okay. <laughs> and he said, and I would be honored to name it after your son and I mean, we were honored, we were thrilled, and we jumped in both feet because we wanted to be a part of it. And we were lucky enough that Charles let us be a part of it. You know, I always tell my family when I'm coming to the cave that, and, and anybody who will listen, that I consider this my time with Colton. You know, I, I rarely bring my other children because to me, this is my time with Colton. And you know, as a mother who, who lost her child, I feel very grateful that I get to have a place where I feel like I'm coming and spending time with him and sharing him with the world. I get to continue to share him with the world. And I cherish my time with him at the cave. At first, Keller offered rides in the Batmobile to terminally ill children, but then took it further, sinking his own money into a bat cave. Hundreds have visited, but Ezra is the first who told Make-A-Wish he wanted to be Batman for a day, a diversion from his battle with retinal and brain cancer. Joker sighted, reported in proximity of Batcave. Oh. Batman, are you ready for your mission? Yes! Look at them all! Holy smokes! Oh, ho, ho. When the Batmobile reaches a baseball stadium, Ezra needs to save a Girl Scout troop from the Joker. <laughs> it's now more than one man's mission. 200 people have come to cheer Ezra on in the classic duel of good versus evil. For a little boy who is fighting for his life, today he gets a chance to fight for someone else. So the immediate goal of the charity is that we have now purchased five acres of land. And on those five acres, we plan to build the ultimate crime fighting cave. It's going to be 35,000 square feet. It will be so large, in fact, that the crime fighting helicopter, yes, we're building a helicopter, will occupy just a very, very small corner of it. We also want the ability to entertain still more families and to be able to grant still more money to a larger number of charities. We hope that this will be here for generations to come. We hope it's going to be something that our city rallies around and becomes ultimately a great source of pride, not just for Phoenix, but really for anybody who wants to be a part of it in any way. We want to spread the joy of giving to as many people as we possibly can.
You know, we've we've been so fortunate to get thank yous from so many people, but to be recognized by the Arizona Interfaith Movement is something that is really exciting to us, the entire team. Uh, this this award is is not for me in my view. It's really for our entire team. I'm just uh, a guy who came up with this crazy idea, but we have employees, countless volunteers, and so many people in the community that have helped us. We are thrilled to receive it. It is an honor that we are delighted to have, and we thank them so much for inviting us to be part of this incredible evening. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it fun to meet the guy who created the Batcave, Charles Keller. Come here, bring it in, brother. I'm proud of you, man. Uh, Pat has been a huge supporter of ours for a long time, and it means a great deal to be up here and to receive this from you, Pat, and from everybody at Arizona Interfaith. I was also told not to prepare anything, so I'll be brief. Um, but when I was um, a young man, a couple of things were, were true for me is, uh, in my youth. Is that one, my uh, grandmother, Loretta, uh, my two boys are here, is their great grandmother, uh, talked to me a lot about the Golden Rule. She would go on and on about uh, what an important thing it was, what, how it was an important way to conduct your life. And it's also true that every day after school, I'd come home and I'd watch the 1966 Batman TV show. And while those two may not have seemed to have had a lot in common, I really felt when I was a kid, the one thing that would make me happier than anything were getting my mitts on the keys to that darn car. And I thought, gosh, if I get that car, I'll be happy. Well, what I, I found out is that one day I did become successful and fortunate enough that I was able to buy the car off of Craigslist, Houston, Texas, by the way. And when I brought it home, it was, it was great to have the car, but what I learned from the Cowles and the now 200 some odd families that we've had the great pleasure to meet, many of whom are here tonight, is that having something that's fun like that is great, but the real joy in life, the thing that really makes life worthwhile, is sharing it with others so that they can also have that same joy. And that's a message that we really hope to, to spread, um, save for the, the privilege of having two fine young men, Chaz and Cade, as my boys, who I love very much, and I'm so very proud that they're here with me tonight. Um, being able to, to do this, to do something nice for, for other people that are in a very dark spot has uh, really been the, the high point of my life. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all taking the time and effort to be here tonight to recognize me and everybody on my team who's here tonight. You guys all give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. Charles Keller. <laughs> 